It's 2 a.m. with Nathan. Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has given each one of you. This was a game that Daniela loved to play when she was a kid. It's a newer version, but same check game there with it. And with it, you manage horses, and she loved horses as, as a child. It's a, it's a fun game. My, my family likes to play it. Uh, but one of the ways you begin a game like this is you give everyone some of the f fake money, some of the pretend money. And, and of course, you need to give everyone the same amount of that money, right? I mean, that, that's one of the keys, so that it's fair. And that's fine for a game. The problem is whenever we try to take that concept of fair and fair with a game, and we try to apply it to God, and we try to apply it to our lives. Life is not fair. The lie of fairness has destroyed families and the different roles that God has called and equipped us to play in families. It has destroyed society. We shoot for fairness. It needs to be fair. It has destroyed many of our lives as our relationships with God have deteriorated because we expect this concept of fairness. God does not promise to be fair. He promises to be just. He promises to love you way beyond you and I could ever deserve. He promises he will not leave you. And he promises that if you belong to him, he will use you in mighty ways for his kingdom. But God does not promise to be fair. Like it says in the scripture, he gives different grace and, and different faith to each one of us. And we need to, instead of saying, hey, it's not fair that uh, this person has more than that person. It's not fair that these things don't look the same. We need to sit back and say, what has God called me to do? with what he has given me. Think about the parable of the talents. He gave one person ten, one person five, and one person one. Think about Jesus' rebuke for the older brother whenever the prodigal son goes off and comes back. And the older brother said, that's not fair that you're doing this for him. Jesus rebukes the older brother. James 1 furthers this idea that it's not about being fair. It's about being who God's called us to be, where he's called us to be it. Listen to James 1. Believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them. And those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a little flower in the field. So many times we are seeking fairness instead of trying to say, God, what is it you've asked me to do? I think our pursuit for fairness many times is an excuse why I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Instead, we should sit back and say, God, you've put me here in this moment. Why do you have me here? How can I serve you? What's the daily bread you've given me and how can I honor you with it? Instead of looking to our concept of fairness, we need to look to God and say, God, you've made me for this moment. What would you have me do to honor and follow you? As you go throughout the day today, stop worrying about what's fair or not. Instead, look and say, God, what would you have me do next? Let's pray. Dear God, it's tough. It's tough because in many ways we think life should be like a game of Monopoly or a board game. It's all structured out and it's all fair. It's all the same. And yet you've called us as the body of believers to different roles. You've made us to do different things. Help us to find contentment in doing what you'd have us do next, instead of worrying about what the next person is called to do. Thank you, Lord, that you love us beyond what we could ever deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.